My dear brothers and sisters, I welcome you once again to this 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. And in a special way, we welcome our elder here, Bishop Paride, whom you know very well. He has not been well the last few months. He has just come from Nairobi. And we have been praying for him. And he's here today. We also pray for Bishop Makram, who is also sickly. And uh, he has undergone some medical surgeries. But he's also doing well and sending you his, his blessings and greetings. Uh, these elders of ours have worked hard and now their bodies are complaining. We assist them with our prayers. Greetings also for, from Cardinal Zubair. I just came in on Friday from Khartoum and we had a meeting of the bishops and with him he also sends you his, his greetings and, and blessings. Uh, with us is also Father Emmanuel Malau. Father Emmanuel Malau is a Paris priest in Awil East, Our Lady of Fatima. In Awil East, and he's a colleague of mine, a classmate of mine. I was happy to see him. He is also sickly. He has come for medical attention. And he's, uh, he's having the problems with the eyes. And I was saying to him, Malau, what did you see? You have been seeing good things. What happened that your eyes is, is causing problems? We, we joke with him because for, for seven years we've been with him in the seminary in Khartoum from the year 93 up to the year 2000 when we graduated and we separated. I came this way and he went that way. So now he has come to Juba. So we pray also for, for Father Malau, for the Lord to cure him. We also pray for the family of Father Victor Odiambo, whom you have known within a week was killed in Tibet. He is a Jesuit priest, a missionary, who came to help us. You know that the number of priests in South Sudan is very little. The population is great. And many missionaries willingly come to take over the pastoral and spiritual responsibilities. Father Victor Rodiambo works in Tibet in the Institute for Training Teachers. He was just killed in cold blood by the usual people called unknown gunmen. It is a painful situation that we, 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 we are in a, an era of peace. And then the people uh, who are coming to help us are getting killed. This is a bad signal. It is not good, especially for this time. So whoever is going around killing people, we are appealing to you that you are not doing a good thing. There is time for everything. It is now said to be time for peace. So don't go back to do what is not of peace. So we pray, we pray for the family of Victor, for his congregation of the Jesuits, and uh, we pray for the Diocese of Rumbe, who are in great shock. We were with the, with the Apostolic Administrator in Khartoum. He came in, Father John Matian, and to arrive the diocese and to find such a tragedy is heartbreaking. So we also pray, we pray for Father John and the priests in Rumbek that the Lord may strengthen them. 
that this act should not discourage them in any way. We pray for our church. We have been in Khartoum with the bishops praying and working hard about our situation, the situation of the church. We are lacking bishops in the diocese. Bishops are a special group of people leading the churches. And once they are not in the diocese, it is problematic. That is how the Catholic Church is organized. Now we have about six dioceses in South Sudan out of seven that needs new bishops. It is a heavy, a heavy responsibility. It has happened. It has never happened before, but it has happened that for the last 10 to 15 years, there were already signs that we need new bishops, new blood to rejuvenate the church programs because our aging bishops are to be replaced. They are crying to the mother church, but yet results are not forthcoming. So we continue to pray. We ask you to pray that the Lord may grant our people the shepherds according to his own heart at the time. Today, we are closing the year with the 33rd Sunday in ordinary time. As I said in the beginning, this Sunday we are given a description of the messianic time, the time of deliverance, the, the time of liberation. Sometimes when, when the priests and the people in the church talk about liberation, some politicians and journalists, they get angry. No, this is the, the, the language of the church. We are not talking about the liberation of arms and liberation of, of I don't know what, nothing. It is, a, it is a language that has been created in the Bible, and it is to teach the people that despite the suffering, the difficulties people go through, they will be liberated. That is why Jesus is called a liberator. So don't mix it up with your own liberation struggle. It is the struggle of life, sin, and death. These sayings are sayings of the times of hope, that the future holds for the upright and the chosen children of the kingdom. We read in the first reading, the book of Daniel, the prophet, is said to be an ap apocalyptic in nature. It is difficult for somebody who has not gone through these theological terminologies to understand this in a common language. It describes events of the end of time, mysterious images, very confusing sometimes events, which also has been described in the gospel teaching of today, the sun becoming dark, the stars are falling, angels taking their, their positions, the dead people are being resurrected, the judgment seat is placed. When you read these things in an ordinary language, you, you will not understand. So if someone don't understand the context of these apocalyptic books and writings, you can be confused. Because who, who can throw down the stars? Who is going to block and the, the sun and so on? This text was written using these images that only those to whom this text was addressed could understand better. This text was written when the people of Israel, the whole population, was depressed and humiliated and are wondering if their pain and their suffering will ever end. This is the, 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 the reason why the prophet came up to give this message of liberation. Because people were totally depressed, they feel humiliated, 
they feel betrayed by the Lord and by their leaders. And so Daniel came up and other writers of the apocalyptic time to explain to the people that this suffering of yours is not meaning the end of the world. So the apocalyptic writers like Daniel and the rest who are announcing the message of hope. They are saying, no situation, how bad it is, is permanent. You have this musician who is singing, no situation is permanent. Somehow, somewhere, a change will take place. And in this case, wickedness, injustices, persecutions, will all eventually come to an end. And a period of justice, a period of peace, will also take over. In human history, these things happen as we see them. Sometimes we, we, we begin to feel like the stars are falling on us. Sometimes we begin to feel as if the world is ending. Tragedies, killing, destructions, mistrust, hatred, all these things, they are not new, totally not new. If somebody say he hates you, it is not new. The hatred is, is there as long as there is humanity. But Jesus is saying, these things will come to an end. The bad king who oppressed the people of Israel was called Antiochus. He was killing all those who opposed him. And people were desperate for justice and for peace. So that you understand the meaning of this apocalyptic writing. So this Antiochus was there, always Catalonas, killing. Once you oppose his way of presenting realities, you are locked up, you are killed, your children are killed, your house is burned. So when you hear these things happening, for instance, in your village and in our country, it is not new. It is not new at all. These are things the Bible has been talking about even during the time of Prophet Daniel, before the birth of Christ. The authors tries to tell the people to have hope. Sometimes even today, like in the time of the apocalyptic writing, we stand depressed and discouraged as we see evil seems to be prevailing. And we begin to say, life is useless now and no need to be alive. It seems change is not taking place. And that even if it is taking place, it is too late and too little. This was the desperate situation of that time. And it is brought to us today so that we don't feel depressed. We don't feel when we see a situation, like as I was saying, our priest is killed in Chivet. That does not depress us. For us who follow the way of the Lord, we are saying, this is an event out of many other events. It happened, and it happened that way. And therefore, it should not create us desperation. Sometimes you lose a relative, a friend, a brother. You, you get things distracted. Your house has fallen because of an earthquake, and you lost everything. Your money is stolen, and so on. We, we, we feel that the world is coming to an end. No. The prophet is telling us today, it is not too late. We are taught today that nothing is late. That our own good works, our own labor, our own faithfulness to Christ, our own faithfulness to justice and peace will speed up the coming of the new era. You see, the way we see things, the way we do things, the way we say things will speed up the new era. 
the new era, the new world, the new nation, where we share the joys together. That sorrow will not have any place in my heart and in your heart. So this is the time that Daniel is trying to predict for us. The fact that we are sinners and sins are among us should not make us discouraged at all. You cannot eliminate sin. My dear brothers and sisters, you cannot eliminate sin. I was telling a group of, 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 of people uh, we are meeting uh, on the issue of the centenary of our faith. That even the devil sometimes can live under the tabernacle, under, under the altar here, to scratch the leg of the bishop. When the bishop is start looking down under the altar there, I think maybe the scratch is too much. The devil does not live out there because he can be captured by the police. So he lives under the altar where there is no police. And he goes out every morning to confuse the world. This was the teaching I got at least from my philosophy teacher. That do you know why it is difficult to capture sin? We say no. He say he lives in the, in the sanctuary where the priests are dressing because nobody want to search this, this clothes here for what? So maybe the devil can hide somewhere then. So this fact that sins are happening, mistakes are happening, uh, sinners are among us, we know that this woman is a sinner and that man is a sinner. That is not the end of the world. This is what Daniel is teaching us today. And he said should make us more courageous because Jesus Christ have defeated the devil and defeated sin. And he has been victorious because he rose and he calls us again victorious because we are baptized in his name. We can know this by being happy. My dear brothers and sisters, if you are not happy as a person, you cause a problem in the community. If you are not loving as a person, you cause a problem in the community. If you are not joyful, you cause a problem. If you are not peaceful, you cause a problem. We need to make this a reality. It is not a matter of principles. It is a matter of reality. Every family that wants to be peaceful must be peaceful with itself and then the others. At least somebody can say to me, this man is peaceful, he is not dangerous, easy to approach. And this is where the commitment of peace comes up. This woman is loving, she always smiles. I, I used to tell the youth here when we do the singing for the centenary, you smile at least. If you don't know how to smile, learn. Learn from your neighbor. If we don't have that, then this peace you are talking about will not come. Because peace is not of angry people. It is of happy people. It is of joyful people. It is of smiling people. If you do everything happily, you will do well. If you do every, anything angrily, you will do it badly. That is it. This does not mean we cannot rebuke each other for bad things happening. I can rebuke my daughter and my son and my, and my wife and, and my brother that, please, this is not correct. This does not mean hatred. No. If I say you are wrong, I don't say I hate you. It is different. These are two different things. 
Now, the person who killed Father Victor Odiambo, we don't hate him. We just say he did wrong. It's not correct. And he should not do that, especially at this moment, tarnishing the image of the whole country, tarnishing the image of, of, of a people who are peaceful. One single sinner making sin multiply. Can you see this? It looks simple, but then it is complicated. Let us pray today that God may give us this spirit of rejuvenating our lives, making our lives new, making our lives of people who want to be peaceful, in, an peaceful, in a peaceful environment, enjoying what God has given to us, that the difficulties we have gone through should make, not make us remain arrogant, distrusting one another. The events that happen is not the falling of the stars, nor the falling of the sun and the moon. These are events that are deemed to happen in a community of sinners. We get sick, you see. When, when, when we went to Khartoum with the Archbishop, we went to a physician to check my blood, how many viruses are inside. They have to take the blood, painful muscular. They have to take blood and to go and diagnose to see what is wrong in the blood of the bishop. The doctor asks, what is troubling you? I say, well, I constant headache, malaria, I, 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 I am confused and, and this and that and so on my stomach. He say, what are you eating? I say, uh, yeah, 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 in Juba. You don't ask. You eat what is said before you. I cannot explain food in our situation. But the doctor say you have a lot of gas and a lot of I don't know what and so on. I say remove them. It is the same with our situation. Those sins, those sicknesses, those devils, they are to be removed. Muskida? So that they, they, there is clean, clean, cleansing. Prescriptions are to be done. Medicines are to be taken. I think all of us are traumatized, so we need to take the medicines of peace. Perhaps uh, Bishop Paride should give us an example. We pray in this Mass that the teaching of today, using the apocalyptic events, should give us a courage to move forward. Courage to read the signs of time. Courage to be able to distinguish between right and wrong. Courage to accept one another. Courage to say, let the past be the past and the present be the present and the future be the future. The courage to see beautiful things in us. That we are able to see beauty in our sons and in our daughters in our wives and in our children, in our brothers and in our sisters, so that we are able to be a community that can embrace even missionaries, people who are not originally from South Sudan will live anywhere in peace and they will not be feeling threatened. Now, Father Odiambo is a Kenyan. Is a Jesuit. What do you think you people have created, we have created through that single act? A confusion. We pray. We pray and we continue to pray that our missionaries will be respected, that our missionaries will continue to labor in the vineyard of the Lord wherever they are in peace, in respect, in joy and in happiness. Not only our, our missionaries, all of us, each and every one of us, we should feel happy, we should feel joyful, we should feel peaceful. 
Not only feeling, but living peaceful. So we pray, we continue to pray that the Lord may free us from the sins that has engulfed each and every one of us and that we leave this, this world in a peaceful manner so that the graces of God that has been bestowed to all humanity may come to us and we enjoy it. God bless you and God bless your families. Radio Mekita 